Hi, I'm Chris Krulin from Sacramento, California, and today I'll be discussing the Liz Frank fixation with internal brace repair. First, the incision on the dorsum of the foot. It's best to place this incision on the lateral aspect of the second metatarsal base, approximately here. That'll allow you adequate angle without having to retract the soft tissues to then place the K-wire across towards the medial cuneiform. The other incision will be medial, approximately here. And if they have significant instability in the sagittal plane, then a diamond-shaped Lisfranc plate can also be utilized. This plate would allow fixation or stability of the first ray and the second ray. Incision for this portion would then be moved from this lateral base to more primarily over the second metatarsal. That allows you enough soft tissue protection of the neurovascular structures when you elevate to then place that plate right here for your sagittal plane fixation. After that plate is placed, you can then use the internal brace repair again from the base of the second metatarsal to the medial cuneiform. Then once you place that portion, you can then come over the top into the middle cuneiform. So prior to going to the operating room, the patient has had an MRI and or a CT scan. And if there is obvious instability, then we will proceed to the operating room knowing that we're going to fix the Liz Frank ligament region. If the patient has a questionable injury but requires some stress testing under anesthesia prior to making any incisions, the patient will be stressed under fluoroscopic imaging. And typically that is a rotational and a abduction or adduction force to see if there is any instability. Another way to do it also, which I do in clinic because it's less painful, is to get a thumb in between the first and second rays more proximally and push in between here to see if you get any gapping at the list, Frank. Those techniques help confirm whether or not surgery needs to be performed to stabilize the list, Frank complex. After my incision here along the lateral base of the second metatarsal, the extensor tendons are identified here, and I split between two of those tendons and then elevate these soft tissues towards the list, Frank ligament. This retractor helps elevate the soft tissues. Then I can place a Hohmann retractor that's bent into this. This then allows me to visualize a ligamentous Lisfranc injury and also the Lisfranc joint. So once the incision has been made and the tissues elevated, you can place a freer to confirm the Lisfranc injury. Here, this freer elevator is in between the bones, showing the injury in the Lisfranc joint. After exposing the Lis Frank joint and cleaning out any scar tissue, the next job is to reduce the Lis Frank joint. This is done with the use of a Weber tenaculum, and I typically place the tenaculum slightly proximal to where my wire is going to go. And I also hold on making my medial incision until I've placed my wire through the medial tissues. Then I open and make sure that I'm making my incision in the right spot. So once I place my Weber tenaculum laterally, I then will clamp down. And I typically try to aim to clamp around the tubercle on the medial cuneiform, which you can see in the fluoroscopic image. Now, if I had some mild sagittal plane instability, I would then reduce the second TMT joint by adjusting the placement of my tenaculum by moving it slightly more dorsal on the metatarsal base. This will allow me to push down. And then when I clamp, it will hold that reduction. Next, I place my wire. Now I place this usually just distal to where I place my clamp and a little bit on the dorsal aspect on the lateral side of the metatarsal base. Angle from a dorsal location on the lateral aspect of the second metatarsal to a slightly more plantar aspect on the medial cuneiform. This is more in line with where the interosseous ligament of the Lis Frank joint is located and also by coming out slightly plantar on on the medial side, it helps you avoid the tibialis anterior. I want my wire to go through the central portion of the Lis Frank joint as seen on the fluoroscopic image. I then pass it all the way through.
So now on the medial side of the foot, this little bump is the wire protruding, and you can see that the wire follows up actually just where the clamp is. Now to have the best soft tissue dissection to avoid any post-operative irritation, I actually remove the clamp. I have a little hole here that can mark where I was, but I then make an incision in this area approximately two centimeters long. Now, once I have exposed the wire, it's important to understand the relationship of the wire and the tibialis anterior tendon. The reason why I say that you should open up the medial side is because you do not want to be placing a percutaneous swivel lock through the tibialis anterior tendon. So by making this small incision, you can ensure that you have avoided any potential soft tissue irritation or imbrication. You can see this wire is appropriately placed just proximal to the tibialis anterior tendon. Now what I will do is retract this tendon here and elevate it up, exposing the medial cuneiform. I'll have my assistant hold this tendon while I place my drill. With the tibialis anterior tendon retracted, I now can safely drill the 15 millimeter hole into the medial cuneiform. And you can see on the fluoroscopic image that the drill doesn't even come close to the joint surface, knowing that you're going to be safe with placement of your swivel lock. So then I will advance the wire. And you can see the wire can move. I place my clamp again. So now it's time to pass the fiber tape and secure the button. At this point, it's important to make sure that your fiber tape align flush with each other. You do not want to have any twisting, which might change the stability of the construct. Now I pass the fiber tape tips through the nitinol loop, and then I will pull them through. And now once they are through, I then make sure that they are not twisted upon each other. And so I try to pull them individually and I ensure that I have them aligned appropriately so that they aren't twisting. I'll have someone hold the button so that the button doesn't get twisted up. After oscillating between both limbs of the suture, sucking the button down, I then get the button in the position. So now we're happy with our button position. So next is tensioning the internal brace repair, and this can require multiple sets of hands. Typically, I'll have my surgical scrub holding the foot while my assistant is then stretching these. Typically, what I do here is I pull up away from the Liz Frank joint, and then I spread these two limbs, and I hold them like that, and then I will insert my swivel lock. As I insert the swivel lock, the tibialis anterior is out of the way. And by having this incision medially, you can also ensure much more accurately that the swivel lock is down to bone or below the cortex as to not irritate the soft tissues. You can take the square on the swivel lock and back it up and with a freer ensure that it is down past the cortex, which it is. So let's let go of the tibialis anterior, pull out that retractor. So one can see that the internal brace is behind the tibialis anterior tendon. If I remove the insertion device, dig down into this soft tissue. You can see that there's no irritation of soft tissue. I'm on bone right there. And the swivel lock is deep and not irritating any soft tissues. So once the first limb of the Liz Frank internal brace repair is complete, the next step is to perform the over-the-top maneuver to secure the supplementary limb. This will allow increased strength of construct and also will address any inner cuneiform instability that might be present. So from this medial-based incision, I will dissect along the bone with my elevator or clamp underneath the tibialis anterior tendon, underneath the EHL, and underneath the neurovascular structures.
So from the dorsum of the foot, I will also dissect along the bone, keeping my clamp along the bone and going underneath the EHL, the nerve vascular bundle and the tibialis tendon anterior. I'm very careful to make sure that I'm not imbricating any structures in this. I want to get it back and bring it up to the middle cuneiform approximately right here. Some of this dissection has occurred initially when cleaning out the Liz Frank joint. Bring the clamp out medial. I then clamp the two edges and then pull them along the bone and out again through the dorsal incision. So here I just double checked to make sure that I'm not imbricating the tibialis anterior tendon and that I'm along the bone here. I would also double check in looking along here. But usually if you do the appropriate dissection, you will be safe. So this is the joint of the second TMT. And here's the medial cuneiform. And I'm going to use fluoroscopic guidance to make sure I put my drill hole in the central position. Once I mark with my fluoroscopic image, I will then drill. Once I drilled, I pass the sutures through this flag suture passer and then pull them through. Then I pull my suture up. I then mark along the black line, and this is for tensioning purposes. Once I have my mark, I move the eyelet closer to the mark, and then I move my eyelet into place, and I start with a few light taps to set the internal brace. Then I can hit a little bigger, and once the swivel lock is down to bone, I then insert the swivel lock. I can then back up part of the inserter to ensure down. I want a little bit more. There's the supplementary limb into the middle cuneiform showing that it's not irritating any of the soft tissues. It's down on the bone, stabilizing inner cuneiform instability. 